all the young dudes by Miss King B99. Chapter 42, Third Year, Fantastic Beasts. Friday, 7th September, 1973. By the end of his first week of third year, Remus felt like he needed another two months just to recover, and there hadn't even been a full moon yet. He felt foolish for not considering that adding three extra subjects to his timetable would also increase his workload. But, of course it did, and by the time Friday rode around, he felt weighted down by the amount of homework to be completed over the weekend. It's not fair, Peter whined. This year was supposed to be fun, with Hogsmeade and everything. We'll still go to Hogsmeade, Peter, James murmured over a complicated-looking star chart. I'm with Pete, Sirius groaned, screwing up his dream diary for divination. Let's sack this off and go and use the Quidditch pitch while it's still light. James looked up eagerly. Yeah, go on then. All three of them stood up. No thanks, Remus said, absent-mindedly. He was actually quite enjoying his transfiguration homework, an essay on bodily transformations. He was pretty good at basic modifications now, for covering up scars, and was able to answer the question at length. Don't fancy looking over my muggle studies, do you, Mooney? Sirius asked, mattily. Remus raised his eyebrows. If I have time. James, Pete, want me to look at yours? Thanks, Remus, Peter grinned, tying up his shoelace. Nah, James refused. Thought I might ask Evans for a bit of help later. Losing battle, mate, Sirius counselled. To know why you're so hung up on her. James just shrugged, not looking at all discouraged. Remus spent a satisfying hour or two by himself, completing the rest of his work for the week. He made a start on potions but thought he could bear leaving for a bit longer. Peter could give him a hand in exchange for the Muggle Studies comprehension homework. They had double potions on Mondays now, first thing, but thankfully no longer with the Slytherins. In fact, the only class that they shared with the Slytherins now was arithmancy, and that wasn't a practical subject, so there was much less space for open-house warfare. Arithmancy was a real surprise to Remus. He'd expected to fall behind Sirius and James, at least at first, but it appeared that the subject was down to logic rather than magical ability, and Remus found the first lesson to be shockingly straightforward. The homework, which he knew Sirius and James had not yet attempted, was to calculate their own art and character numbers using the Agrippin method. He actually found this quite soothing, though he knew he would never admit it to anyone. Apology plodded along at its usual pace. Remus couldn't pretend to be all that interested in it, but at least it wasn't difficult. Astronomy was not his strongest subject either, but luckily Peter was generally so thrilled to be the only one who knew something that he gave Remus most of the answers for nothing. Then there was his new favourite subject, care of magical creatures on Wednesdays and Thursdays. He wasn't going to tell the others about that either. They already teased him so much for liking in history, and for taking runes. All good-natured, of course. He made fun of them for doing divination, which by the sounds of it was pretty dire. He had read the copy of Fantastic Beats and Where to Find Them twice over the summer. It had been his favourite bedtime reading. The pictures and descriptions were so vivid and they filled his dreams with the most spectacular images. There had been nothing in the set text, Remus was sure to check this, about werewolves. Fortunately, they weren't considered in the same league as magical creatures, and it looked as though they weren't going to be studying our humans until next year in Defence Against the Dark Arts. I hope we do unicorns, Marlene sighed, leaning against the wall as they queued outside the classroom for their first lesson. Something really nice like that. Mary raised an eyebrow. I'd rather do dragons. Something a bit exciting. I'm just glad we don't have Kettleburn, Marlene replied. This made Remus pay attention. Don't we? Who have we got then? Weren't you paying attention to Dumbledore at the feast? Arlene looked at him disapprovingly. Kettlebun's off in Romania, Bulgaria or something, doing some work for the ministry. I don't know how useful he is, though. He's not exactly in one piece. So who have we got? Whoever it was at that feast, Arlene shrugged. But my timetable says Professor L. Ferox. As she said this, the classroom door opened, and the fifth years ahead of them filed out, chatting animatedly. The Gryffindor third years went inside, and Remus took a desk by the window next to Marlene. When the teacher emerged from his office, both Mary and Marlene, and, actually, every other girl in the class, set up a little straighter. 
He was a good deal younger than Kettleburn, who had been quite grizzled even in his middle age. Remus would have guessed this teacher to be in his early thirties. He still had all of his limbs, too, which was definitely a plus. His hair was thick and sandy blonde, long enough to reach halfway down his back. He wasn't dressed in robes like most teachers, but practical, outdoorsy clothes and heavy leather brown boots. He had a slightly weather-beaten face, which served to give his strong features a kind of rugged appeal. His eyes were bright blue and gleamed as he smiled warmly at the class. Good afternoon, he boomed in a gruff Liverpoolian accent. He clapped his large, calloused hands together. Welcome to your first year of care of magical creatures. I'm Professor Ferox. You've all got this commander text, I hope. The class immediately pulled out their copies of Fantastic Beasts, along with parchment and quills, then looked up at him attentively. Professor Ferox continued to beam at them all. Excellent, he continued. A crack and read, as I'm sure some of you have already discovered. It gives you a nice comprehensive guide to identifying and encountering the most well-known magical creatures. But what it can't give you, and what you'll need to excel in this class, is quick thinking, cool headedness and nerves of steel. Some of the girls tittered at this, and Remus felt a flutter of excitement. See, James, he thought ruefully, it's not a girly subject. He wasn't sure about the specifications, though. He had enough nerve, maybe. Had to, after the summer he'd had. But cool leatheredness was hardly one of his defining traits. Now, Ferox clapped his hands together, as if eager to begin. He bent under his desk. Look what I've got for you. When he rubbed his palms, the rough skin made a soft shh sound. He obviously didn't spend a lot of time inside, Remus thought to himself. Professor Ferox was clearly a man of action. The teacher was now lifting a large wicker basket, setting it gently down on his desk. He opened it, and a large furry creature stalked out. It was the largest cat Remus had ever seen, with bushy silver fur patterned with dark spots, eye-pointed ears, and a strange brush-like tail like a lion. It mewed rather grumpily, and then hopped up to sit on the top of the basket so it was almost eye-level with Ferox. It glared imperiously down at the desk, flicking its tail back and forth. Professor Ferox stroked a long finger down the animal's back, which it appeared to tolerate, blinking slowly. Can anyone tell me what sort of creature actually is? It's a cat, Mary said, bluntly, without raising her hand. Ferox laughed cheerfully. A common mistake, Miss MacDonald. Mary MacDonald. Miss MacDonald. No, actually it's not a cat though they are often interbred. Oh! A Ravenclaw boy at the back of the room raised his hand. Yes, Mr. Stanbrook, sir. Is it an easel, sir? Five points to Ravenclaw, Ferrex nodded enthusiastically. Actually, it's an easel. Remus sighed inwardly. He knew that. He ought to have known it anyway. He could remember reading about the tale. Mentally, he struck quick thinking off the list of Ferrex's requirements. Open to show the professor that he was at least eager to learn, Remus began to take note as Ferox spoke, still stroking Achilles absentmindedly. You can always identify an easel by its cat-like appearance, eye level of intelligence, speckled fur and plumed tail, the teacher said, indicating these features lovingly. They are classified triple X by the Ministry of Magic. Can anyone tell me what this means? Remus's hand shot up this time, but so did Marlene's. Ferox picked her, asking her name as he did so. Marlene McKinnon, she smiled up at him. Sir, triple X classified creatures are not recommended for domestication, but should not prove difficult for a qualified wizard to handle. Excellent. Five points to Gryffindor, Ferox tipped his head. Remus fumed silently. She'd read that straight from the book. Ferox carried on. We will be focusing on triple X classified creatures for the rest of the year. Now... While it's true that measles are not recommended as pets, this is not because they are dangerous. In fact, anyone who tells you they're dangerous has likely found themselves on the wrong side of one and should not be trusted. Can anyone tell me why? Remus's hand flew up again. It was all coming back to him now. But Ferox picked on another Ravenclaw this time. Because they can detect suspicious people, Davy Kirk piped up, earning another five points for Ravenclaw. Absolutely, the professor smiled. 
Measles are excellent judges of character and will react fiercely to anyone untrustworthy. As such, the Ministry requires Measle owners to hold the proper licence and have undergone certain proficiency tests. But, as you can see, he stroked Achilles once more. The silver cat had barely moved a muscle except to survey the class. They do make wonderful pets, as long as they are shown proper respect and care. Is he yours then, Professor? Mary asked, batting her eyelashes flirtatiously. He's lovely. He is indeed, Ferrex replied. If you're all careful and don't crowd him, Achilles will probably let you stroke him. Line up, class. There was a general murmuring and scraping of chairs as everyone got to their feet and formed a queue. Remus made sure he was at the very back so that maybe the lesson would end before he got to the front. Achilles was sure to Aiton. Werewolves were the very definition of untrustworthy. Approach him slowly and don't avoid eye contact. If he tries to go for you, he'll use his claws, so keep alert. There we go. He'll let you stroke him now, nice and gently. As the queue shortened, the professor continued talking, giving them encouragement and interesting facts, interwoven with his own anecdotes. Remus didn't know what Ferrex had done before becoming a teacher, but he'd certainly had some adventures. Travelled everywhere, it sounded like. Finally, Remus was at the front of the queue. He felt frozen to the spot, looking at the yellow-eyed animal nervously. Come on, then. What was your name? Professor Ferrex beckoned him forward. Remus didn't move. Remus Lupin. I'm not, um... Cats don't tend to like me, he mumbled. Actually, it's not a cat the teacher said, smiling. Come on, Lupin, up you come. Remus sighed heavily and approached. He didn't want someone as cool as Ferox to think he was a wuss. Achilles watched him walk forward. It did look very intelligent. There was something in the eyes, even though it had a very ugly stub nose. He reached his hand out, allowing the nasal to sniff him. Its claws weren't out, but Remus was willing to bet that they were very long and very sharp. He'd been scratched by cats before and never really liked them. Very good, Professor Ferrex was saying. Now a bit closer and give him a stroke. Go on. Swallowing hard, Remus obeyed, ready to jump back if he had to. But actually did not need mind that he was a werewolf. Instead, he actually began to purr as Remus rubbed him tentatively behind the ear, closing its eyes and looking completely docile. There we are, Professor Ferrex cheered, delighted. Excellent judges of character, Measles are. Now, we haven't long left, so if you all just make a note of their homework. Remus stroked Ashley's for a little bit longer. The creature seemed to be enjoying it so much that he felt bad for stopping. That was good, wasn't it? Marlene chatted as they left their first lesson. I hope he always brings things for us to look at. Not going to be very practical when we get to the quintuple X creatures, Remus said. Maybe we'll bring Ashley's in again, though. Marlene replied, hopefully. Who cares about his cat? Mary nudged her. He's bloody gorgeous. Yeah, Marlene giggled. I wonder if he's single. Remus sighed and began to lag behind the girls. They were a nightmare when they got onto the topic of boys, and it was best to stay out of their way before they started waxing lyrical about James and Sirius. They began to daydream as they meandered in the direction of the great hall for lunch. It had been a better lesson than he'd expected, and even though Ferrex hadn't given him any house points, he had essentially said that Remus had a trustworthy character. No one had ever said anything like that before, and it made him feel unusually pleased with himself, a peaceful feeling that carried on through lunch, into their potions lesson later that day, and was still going strong that night as he drifted off to sleep. He dreamed of lions.